We strut our stuff. We show the world what we're made of. We flaunt what we've got. We're all guilty of it to varying degrees. I don't have a lot to show off, but what I will say is I love producing music. And in doing that, I found a way to become a better artist. Novi, day three. So tonight I'm gonna continue to write and record some guitar, bass, and drum parts and move the project forward, but I really wanna showcase some of the oddities that I employ from a production perspective. I never took the opportunity to learn much about music theory, and I only took a handful of guitar lessons in the 90s, but I've got big ideas, and thankfully the digital audio workstations that we employ nowadays really give guys like me an opportunity to express myself creatively in a way that I otherwise might not be able to. I took the last few hours to lay some additional guitar and bass parts. What you're hearing here is what we did yesterday. And with this piece, the guitar and bass parts are one take. Now when we move into this next piece, quite a bit more dynamics in the way it changes, and it's complicated, and it's abrupt, it's weird, and frankly, I can't play it straight through. So what I've done is segmented into 16 different parts that I could land uh, a good take with. So pretty good. What you wind up with, though, is a bunch of scenes. I like the way it sounds, but with each of those seams, there comes a drawback. So there is a tiny click that you can hear listening closely every time one of those seams is passed. So I don't like that, and you can definitely tell that it's quantized and that it's segmented and uh, that there's some looping going on. So clever way around that, we'll select the piece that we'd like to uh, fix. So I'm only going to select the guitar and bass tracks, as they're the only ones that have any seams to work out here. So once I've got everything that I want to change selected, I'm going to change the unit of measurement that uh, I'm able to move things around within from the standard, which is a bar. So each of these cells has a, is a bar. Um, I'm going to change it from that down to 1 and 128 of a bar. What that lets me do is to zoom in very tightly to the pieces. Oh, I'm going to stop it so that I don't keep moving it around. When I get in nice and tight, all I want to do is grab one of the corners of any clip and just move it back. That creates a fade effect on every single clip and that fade's length of time to fade in is 1 128 of a bar. Now for context, that's a really short amount of time that's not really perceivable by human ears. I'm going to move over and do the same with any random click and fade it out by pulling it back one click. And that's it. So in doing that, that uh, unfortunate noise that seems to happen when you produce music this way has gone away. So let's, uh, let's test that out. That's much better. And one final thing I want to do to clean up this odd bass line that I've got going on. I want to normalize it. What I'm experiencing is that there's some significant amplitude changes between the various uh, clips within the bass line. And that's simply because some of the attack that I used on those clips was done with your traditional finger plucking, your finger picking. Um, the others were done more aggressively with a slap technique, so with my thumb just percussively banging the string. So that, by nature, creates a louder amplitude 
than your traditional finger picking. So I want to normalize that so that all of those clips have a little bit more common um, amplitude. So with them selected, I'm simply going to right click and scroll down uh, to normalize clips, let it run its thing. Boom, it's, it's significantly louder. What it in essence does is it normalizes the, the, the peaks and the valleys of the amplitude. And it tries to find a common, you know, happy point to bring all of the lower amplitudes to, and it does scale back some of the higher amplitudes down. So in that, it's a bit like a hard limiter with a compressor effect, but uh, a little bit more uh, studio-centric as it's done on the track level versus um, in each clip. So that's that. That's as easy as it is to sort of uh, kind of get things going when it comes to intricate parts that are maybe a little bit beyond your capabilities so that you're still able to achieve the sound you're looking for, even though you might not be good enough to play. So anyway, that's what we're going to end on this evening, and I'll be back tomorrow with uh, something else. I don't know. We'll see. Keep moving forward.